Hello, uh, my name is Aiste Elengvenite. I'm the chair of the Early Career Advisory Panel, and today I'm very glad to have our three uh, people that we will be talking about uh, our Congress, uh, our last day of Congress. So I'm very happy to he have here Janos Reteli from Hungary, who is a professor of psychiatry and psychotherapy from Semmelweis University, but he is also a member of ADHD Network and EPSC Network. He's also on the Scientific Program Committee. Uh, also next to him is Anniko Kurosi from the Netherlands, who is currently associate professor at the University of Amsterdam, who is focusing on cognitive function by early life stress, aging, nutrients, epigenetic mechanisms, and uh, she's also a member of Nutrition Network in ECMP, and she's also a member of Scientific Program Committee, so you can discuss that uh, just in a moment. And uh, next to her uh, is a person that probably all of you know, is uh, John Cryan, who gave also a talk this year, uh, who is the chair of the Scientific Program Committee in 35th, 36th, and 37th ECMP Congress, who is also a professor and chair of the Department of Anatomy and Neuroscience in University College Cork, and he's focusing mostly on interaction between brain, gut, and microbiome, uh, and how it applies to stress, psychiatric immune-related disorders, and key time windows across lifespan. And he's also a member of Scientific Program Committee. So, uh, since it's the last day of the Congress, my first question is, it will be starting from you, Janos. How did it go at the Congress? today, uh, but also the other days. Thank you very much, Aista. Um, uh, well, the conference was uh, terrific in my view. But first of all, I would like to thank uh, John uh, and Aniko uh, for uh, inviting me to the Scientific Program Committee. Uh, I've been involved in organizing conferences, but never in such a, a huge, large-scale international conference. and. Uh, uh, when I first uh, received an email from John, I, I was, of course, surprised, but, and then we met in Amsterdam for a day, and from there on, you could just follow how ideas, thoughts, concepts, they form into a, first into a draft program, then to a final program, and when we arrived in Barcelona, when I heard the first lecture, then I saw that, wow, it's, it's really formed into uh, a coherent uh, conference, and... Um, well, uh, we can talk about the details later on, but, but I, I just thought it's fantastic. You know, I'm an I'm a adult psychiatrist, um, uh, but I work at a university department, so I'm involved both in uh, treating patients and teaching, um, but I also do clinical and basic research, which of course is too much, obviously, but especially here at such a conference, you really you don't know where to go because all of these topics uh, are, are involved, and, and you just have great lectures as, as a teacher, as a clinician, as a researcher. Mm -hmm. And Aniko, uh, you were an expert in a camper session this morning. Yes, correct. It was actually, yeah, it went really well. At first, mm -hmm. you would think at 8.30 in the morning on the last day, maybe the attendance might be uh, less, but that was uh, not the case, luckily. So it also shows all the commitment and the motivation uh, from the audience to really follow through the nice uh, program. And uh, yeah, it was really nice to be able to discuss uh, the, this more nutritional and lifestyle sort of interventions in the context of mental health. This is really an upcoming topic, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. uh, I'm also a member of the ECMP Nutrition Network, so it's really, really nice. Of course, it's also in strong connection with John's uh, topic on the microbiome and all of these aspects and how we can really bring it to a translational level and how we can, uh, yeah, what, what needs to happen in the field. So it was a very stimulating discussion that was, uh, was great. For those, because campfire sessions are very well attended, I think, uh, but you're kind of selective. It's sometimes hard to get in. Okay, for those that did not manage to come, yeah. can you give us some uh, sure. key messages? I think that's a really good idea. Yeah, so we discussed really about how to use nutrition, or nutrients, but also dietary interventions, so diet styles, let's say, to, uh, to help mental health. So to really, as a preventive strategy, but also as a potential treatment strategy. And we discussed where is the field at, what are the key questions that need to be asked uh, in the field to be able to make this big paradigm shift. And so for who? 
should we think about it? Uh, is it for any kind of mental health disorder or is it for specific domains uh, during specific life stages or depending on your sex or of your, of your age, of your uh, genetic background it's, and the culture? It's all going to be determining also what you might be needing and uh, also, of course, how difficult it is to infer causality. So how do, should we tackle the whole question of how to uh, understand the mechanism and the mechanistic insights about it? And, um, and uh, also, which nutrients then? Which nutrition, which diets? And uh, so it was a really lively discussion, both from preclinical aspects as well as from clinicians, like, okay, we want to use it, but uh, help us to <laughs> get farther in this. That's really uh, nice. <laughs> yeah. So John, uh, so this year you presented a, a lecture a bit, kind of unexpectedly. Uh, your opinion, how did it go oh. today, <laughs> but also yesterday? Um, yeah, I know. Um, I'm really happy with how the whole conference went. Um, I had to step in myself last minute to, because of the situation yeah. in Israel. One of our speakers uh, couldn't uh, make it, uh, unfortunately. Um, uh, so people got a, a, a dose of my bad dad jokes and other things uh, yesterday, uh, overall. But uh, just to step back a little bit, you know, the, the conference itself, I think, has been a, a, a tremendous success. We have over 6,500 registrants. That's, that, you know, that's a huge number. Um, 775 people online, but most people here in wonderful Barcelona, which is a wonderful city for a conference at this time of year. The weather gods were with us. It is really, uh, really fantastic. And uh, I'd like to compliment um, uh, the entire program committee, but especially in, uh, Nico and Yanis here, but, uh, and everyone who helped to bring it together. It's a team sport, and uh, I, was, I was very privileged to chair uh, the program committee uh, last year, this, uh, for last year's meeting, this year, and for next year. And uh, it is one of the most enjoyable things I've had in my career to do, and to try and uh, bring frontier science uh, to the community and understand where things are going and use innovative ways to communicate where we're going uh, in uh, psychiatry and neuroscience in general. Um, and I, I'm totally biased, but I think it's been a really great success and the feedback I've got has been really, you know, really important in that regard. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's just something I'd like to add to this, that I think we also put a particular effort, and I think that was also wonderful, to really increase the diversity across the speakers and across uh, the program. And I think that has been also appreciated. I have uh, heard a lot of positive comments about the fact that you see uh, across the seniority, but across uh, also, of course, uh, gender and all the different uh, diversities that one can think of. So there is a lot of commitment from ECMP to encourage that, and that's and, uh, and truly that's, wonderful. And that's something in the program committee we take exceptionally yeah. seriously, and we want to really make sure that we're not just talking about gender, but it's about all aspects. Yes. And we understand that many of the young scientists m need uh, may look different than some of the older scientists that you usually see. So we're trying to, to, to change that. We're trying to be more inclusive. We're trying to bring in uh, mm -hmm. di you know, di different ways. And uh, I think they, there's still work to do. Uh, but uh, you know, I think it, it's an important aspect of ECMP. We want to be uh, a conference for everyone uh, mm -hmm. overall. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, I could add to that or connect to that. Uh, this morning I chaired a session, which was a hot topic session, mm -hmm. which of course the name itself already <laughs> tells us that uh, we will hear unexpected things. But, but again, these were short lectures uh, early in the morning. Um, it was well attended and, uh, and, and it, it was really, it was incredible the wealth of uh, topics that we started with uh, treating antipsychotic induced weight gain uh, in schizophrenic patients, which is a very pragmatic clinical question, uh, very important, of course, and, and now with semaglutid and, and uh, new, new anti-diabetic -diab uh, medications, this, this might, there might be a success in this, this, this regard. And then we went on to neuroimaging and then biomarker research and robotics. Uh, and in the end, a real basic uh, topic about uh, the neural circuitry of forgetting. So I, I was just really enjoying every minute of that, uh, of that session because it was really a, an example where clinicians, researchers, young researchers, not so young researchers, they're, they're just having a real discussion. Mm. Yeah, in general, uh, also throughout the Congress, since it's the last day, we can go through not 
only today, but also other days. We had quite a few uh, plenary lectures that are all already online, so people can connect and see them. Uh, do you have uh, specific memories from plenary or keynote lectures? Uh, John, for example. Yeah, no, I mean, the keynote was a great opener. Sheena Jocelyn just, just set the scene, and, and it, went, uh, it went from there. But uh, I, I will call out the, 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 uh, the plenary yesterday from Sergio Pasca, uh, looking at, at uh, assembloids. And uh, I just found it to be um, just visionary in terms of where we're going. Uh, talks like that wouldn't have existed 10 years ago. And, and the ability of organoid technology to, to be advancing towards treatments in, in, in specific specific rare diseases uh, is tremendous. I felt very optimistic uh, for neuroscience. I felt very, um, you know, it's in a really exciting time uh, to be a neuroscientist. And uh, it's been a while since we've had optimism. I, I think optimism is a word that, that's all over the conference. I think people are optimistic about treating metabolic side effects in, in schizophrenia. People are optimistic about new strategies for depression, whether it's through psychedelics or, 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 or other mechanisms. For people are optimistic about um, uh, digital health uh, approaches. So, um, but but uh, Pascal's talk yesterday was really optimistic about where the fundamental of molecular and cellular neuroscience can actually move things forward. Um, I, was, I felt very humbled uh, by listening to it, and uh, um, you know, it, it just was, it, it's just really the state of the art of, of where we are. Yeah, and I think since ECMP is so much about translation, so mm. connecting for clinical science with also clinicians, so I think it's very, very a specific thing to ECMP to have these talks, but that are also comprehensible for people that maybe yeah. are not experts in, in this area. Yeah. So these plenaries and keynotes, they are uh, specific to ECMP, but I think very important to listen. And also, yeah, you can do it online after. The, was there any specific plenary or keynote that you appreciated? Yeah, anything? so I actually, um, going back to the comment of, uh, of John, I think the, the, the plenary or the keynote by, uh, by Sheena Jocelyn was actually phenomenal. It was a really nice um, race through history partly and of how it all came about, the whole concept of engram and learning a memory and this core question that we still haven't been able to solve, like how do we store memories in our brain, which is so fundamental as this is such a core aspect of so many diseases uh, that we start forgetting, not only with dementia, but also in depression and other diseases, we have uh, cognitive problems. So this is core to across disease. And, uh, and I thought that her talk was uh, really nice and, um, and inspiring to see how uh, the field has evolved really in the past century and uh, with the new technologies, uh, how far, how much farther we can go. And I thought that was also really nicely complemented by one of the campfire session, which was mm -hmm. also about Engram. And then there was the opportunity to then discuss even farther, like where should really the field go? And okay, now we mapped it, but now we still don't know what is in this size and how can we get to know that? And uh, I thought it was a very stimulating uh, discussion. Yes, yeah. so it's about past, present, also future. Yes, exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, and you, Janos, uh, have you appreciated a particular <laughs> session, plenary or keynote, or not a particular Well, uh, several, several things came to my mind. Of course, the keynotes or the, the plenaries are incredible, and much has been said already. I don't want to mm. reiterate <laughs> the, the incredible innovations that we heard yesterday from Sergio Pasca, but, but we haven't mentioned uh, the talk of, uh, of uh, Oscar Marine on, uh, on Sunday. And uh, what was uh, really uh, what, I, what I found incredible was that he, he's a basic researcher. He's, he's spent decades uh, studying the cerebral cortex and, in particular, interneurons, uh, development of interneurons. But he, the, the way he put his lecture, again, in a clinical context, uh, he was showing how one um, uh, genetic modification which impacts parvovalmin positive interneurons will cause alterations in the dopaminergic system, which, which is, you know, we've been talking about this for, for so long, how, what's going on with interneurons in the schizophrenic brain and why, why is there, uh, why do we see a hyperdopaminergic status in the, in, the, in, the, in the dopaminergic neurotransmission? So really, you, you start to think, well, uh, we're, we're understanding schizophrenia, <laughs> of course, that that's, that's an exaggeration, but, but I, I thought, and let's not forget that there's still a plenary Today, mm. starting in a few minutes, and uh, um, just I have to, sorry, I have to look the, at the program. But um, 
Kafui. Uh, yeah, Desara. Desara. Yeah, yeah. uh, I've heard him talk. He's he's phenomenal. So um, I don't know what he's going to talk about, but but I I, I really um, I would. Um, Recommended for everybody. I think John, uh, you seem to have an idea about uh, the talk. It's about using technology. So he's electrophysi using f electrophysiology and artificial intelligence, big data, to try and really look at circuits in the, in the brain and and, and 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 where they're going. So I think he he is a phenomenal uh, speaker. He's a phenomenal advocate for diversity uh, in psychiatry and in neuroscience. And and uh, I think it will be. Uh, definitely a good one to close the, uh, the, the Congress on. I thought Diana Barch's uh, provocative uh, plenary about uh, childhood um, uh, antecedents of, of uh, mental illness w w w you know, w was really important, uh, that we can look at early uh, interventions uh, that might have you know, some benefits uh, mm -hmm. for with children with depression as well. So I'm, I'm, um, and then this morning, um, the, 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 the story on, on the development of migraine with the Brain Prize, like we can learn a lot. Like across, the, one of the things in ECMP is trying to do is trying to look at different areas of, of neurology and other areas of, of, of medicine and see where we can learn, learn from these things. And, um, and I think that's going to be really important. And, and we always like to have a peppering of uh, neurology in the program, and there's been some nice uh, uh, talks on neurogeneration, in particular Alzheimer's, but even I just came from the blood-brain barrier session, and that was really cool because it was talks relating to epilepsy and uh, dementia, uh, as well as uh, mood disorders. So um, I think, again, there's optimism out there in, in, in relation to, to, to how, how we can go. The one thing I would like to uh, uh, remind listeners uh, about is a, a session we had yesterday, which was called ECMP Inspired. And um, this was a, a phenomenal, for me, uh, session where we had four very short talks, 10-minute talks from amazing people. Tali Baram talked about her journey uh, from Israel to the US and throughout her career studying early life adversity and, and the impact that that had. Mara Dearson uh, talked about um, cognitive biases. She got us all to really challenge our own intrinsic biases. She got us to imagine we are um, uh, um, on an airplane and the captain makes a, uh, uh, an announcement and then we get off the plane and we meet the head of a hospital and then we go for, uh, we take, we go for dinner with them and uh, we see uh, a couple. And she challenged us that how many of us had s saw the, the pilot as being male the head of the hospital as being male and the couple as being straight, white. Uh, and, and so the, the, this is important because the, the cognitive biases are, are, are everywhere. Then Jerome Breen from King's College in London, who's one of the leaders in psychiatric genetics, talked about team science and, and the importance of genetics and, and, and small effect sizes and, and where that was going. And growing up in, in, in a, in a, on a farm in the west of Ireland, how he's, he, his career went. And finally, and perhaps the most um, uh, uh, important was, uh, in, in one way, we had Ahmed uh, Haneker, who is a psychiatrist with lived experience of trauma. And uh, he's on a real mission to uh, uh, take stigma out of mental health health and has developed some interventions that can be used in that way. And he goes by the wounded healer. And so I, I found that was really important that we have and throughout the program, we have lived experience uh, aspects, you know, in, in all and in everything that we do. And, and that's something that really is really important. But I would, you know, if, if people want to have 40 minutes, I would advocate for the ECMP inspired, uh, you know, to, to, to go back and look at it. Mm -hmm. So just to wrap it up. Uh so this Congress, I think it was a success. There were so many people attending, great sessions. So the next Congress is in Milan. Uh, we all already have some confirmed speakers, like uh, Katerina Domschke from Germany, Siri Lechnes from Norway, Elaine Husayo from the United States, Erin Schumann from Germany, also Anne uh, Grabiel from USA. Are there Sessions that you are looking forward uh, for next year? Are you attending next year, uh, Aniko? Yeah, I will definitely be attending next year. But I, this is the first time I hear this insight into the <laughs> program of next year. So I look forward to but know more about the program. But, but what do all of them six names have in common? That's they're all fantastic scientists. <laughs> there you go. But they all <laughs> happen to be women. Aha. Uh -huh. 
Ah, <laughs> because the names, uh, I did not uh, <laughs> get to all, see that. But what Excellent. they have in common is they are Im uh, impactful scientists who are transforming how we think about the brain uh, overall, but they happen to be women. Sounds very exciting. <laughs> yeah. So CMP is all about diversity, inclusion, but also just good science. So mm. it doesn't matter who you are if you do good yeah, science. Yeah, you know, and we had a session on, on disability uh, uh, as, as, as here, yeah. uh, in, in which was and the, working with the Alba Network, which is really important to really you know push this uh, uh, agenda forward. Mm. Yeah, and I think for me this is really the number one conference where you can have this translational aspect, where clinicians come together with preclinical scientists. And we also had this fantastic uh, campfire about the advocacy for animal research. I think that mm. was also a very, very good one to have with clinicians and the preclinical scientists to reevaluate yeah. where we are at. Yeah, so just to wrap it up, uh, Janos, do you have a particular, like, one word or three words <laughs> uh, advice for early career yes. researchers or researchers uh, that are attending? I also plan to attend in Milan, and for early career scientists, I recommend to, to bring a poster, submit an abstract for a poster, because not all conferences have traditional uh, poster sessions, which I like very much, and I, I don't think they should be changed. Mm. So thank you very much for coming, and see you in Milan. <laughs>